So in this video, let us have a look at um, questions from a simple pendulum. So you need to know how to define a simple pendulum. And a simple pendulum is just uh, the um, small mass called the bob suspended to an extensible string, otherwise attached to the fixed pivot. That is how you can define a simple pendulum. Okay, let us have a look at the question. So from the part, first part here, the statement is that the diagram below shows uh, a simple pendulum. Now, starting from this part here is that if the bulb of the pendulum takes uh, 0 0.5, so this is 0 0.5 uh, seconds to swing between point, I mean between extreme position A and C. The first question that we are answering is calculate the period of uh, oscillation. Calculate the period of oscillation. So now, what is the period of oscillation? So we are calculating period. And in the case you find the question... Uh, what is period? Period is just the time taken for one complete oscillation or the time taken for the bulb to move from point A to B to C and back to A. That is what we call the period. So in this case, to find the period, we use this formula. Period is equal to time taken defined number of oscillation. Now, the time that is given here is 0 0.5 in seconds. Then what about number of oscillations? Now, one thing that you should know is that when the bulb move from A to B to C, to B and back to A, that number of oscillation is equals to 1. Now, for me, we divide this uh, now the distance or the parts that the bulb move into four parts. So you can have this part, this part, this part, and that part for it to, be, to, to come back to A. There are four of them. So which means we are dividing the whole journey, which is just one complete oscillation, which is 1, divide in four parts. So which means when it moves from A to B, it is just the same as 1 over 4. If it moves from B to C, it's 1 over 4. Here also 1 over 4. Here also 1 over 4. Which means when you add 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, you're going to find a 1. Okay? Now, since you are using a calculator, you can put this in decimal, which is just 0 0.25. 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So if you add 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, you're going to find a 1. So now, since the bulb has only moved from A to C, so you're going to add 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And therefore, we find what? 0 0.5. Okay? Then, 0 0.5 divided 0 0.5 is just 1. Our period is in seconds. But if it had moved, let's say, from A to B to C and back to B, uh, that is the midpoint B, we are going to add 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. It was going to give us 0 0.75. I guess you get that. Okay? So that is the period. Then the second question that is B. So this is A. The second question that is B, calculate the frequency of the pendulum. Now, it is very easy to calculate the frequency if you already found the period because you just have to use the formula frequency is equals to 1 over period. What you should know is that period and frequency, uh, they are inversely proportioned. The higher the frequency, the higher the period, the lower the frequency. The higher the frequency, the lower the period. I guess you get that. So in this case, we are going to say 1 over uh, 1 seconds. And this gives us 1, you know, that frequency is calculated in heads. So that is the answer. Then for C question, state whether the frequency of oscillation will increase or decrease or remain the same one if the length of the uh, string is increased. Now, length of a string uh, is one factor that affects the period of a pendulum. And of course, the more you increase the string length, the more uh, you increase the period. In other words, increase in length of a uh, string increases the period. So now, from what I just explained, if the period increases, what will happen to the frequency? So the frequency, um, the frequency decreases. Okay, decreases. Then the mass of the bulb. The mass of the bulb is one of the factors that do not affect the period of the pendulum. So in this case, the frequency, uh, the frequency, the frequency remains the same. Okay. So the frequency remains the same, remains the same. At this particular point, you need to know the factors that affect the period of a pendulum, of which we have acceleration due to gravity and, of course, the length of uh, the string. 
Then those that do not affect, we can include the size of or mass of the bulb and other other factors that do not affect the uh, period of uh, the simple pendulum. Okay. Then let us have a look at the second question, which means we've answered that question fully. Let us have a look at uh, this question. The figure below shows an experiment in which, uh, which was carried out to measure the time interval of a simple pendulum. As you can see, A, B, C, we have the cotton thread, the bulb, and the support. The bulb oscillated between A and C, so from A to C. State the meaning of the term oscillation. So what is the meaning of the term oscillation? So oscillation is just the uh, vibration, the vibration of the bulb to and uh, from, to and fro, okay? That is what we call the uh, oscillation. So the vibration of the bulb to and fro, that is what we call the oscillation. Then if the bulb, uh, if, the, if, if the pendulum bulb took 0 0.2 seconds to swing from A to C, so equally here we have from A to C, calculate the period. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. So from A to C, calculate the period. Now we know that from A to C, our N is equals to 0 0.5 as well. So we are going to have period is equals to T over N. So please, period, we use capital letter T, not P. Then, of course, the time taken was 0 0.2 seconds as indicated. Then, of course, we have a uh, number of oscillation, which is just a 0 0.5. And I guess you know why it is a 0 0.5. So, in this case, it's 0 0.2 divided 0 0.5, and of which this one is going to give us 0 0.4 seconds. Never forget the unit. So, the first thing you've seen, the formula replacing with the units, and, of course, the final. That is how we flow in terms of answering questions. Then question C, using the uh, using your answer in B, determine the frequency of the uh, bulb. So using the answer, determine the frequency of the bulb. So frequency is equals to 1 over period, which is 1 over, the period is one zero, uh, 0 0.4 seconds. And this one is going to give us a 2.5 uh, heads. You know that frequency is calculated in heads. So that is how we simply answer uh, this question. So on this one, I've, ad I've added an additional question, which is uh, from the simplest topic, that is mass and weight. This topic is also at grade 9 level, so it is quite um, a simplest topic that you can ever find. So the question reads, a, a lion of mass 200 kg is transferred from the moon to the earth. Acceleration of free fall on the moon is 1.67 meter per second square. While that of Earth is 10 meter per second square, the question is state, one, the instrument commonly used to measure, used in the laboratory to measure the amount of matter in a body. So maybe this time around you're asked to define mass. So mass is just a quantity of matter in a substance or the amount of matter in a substance. So the instrument that is used to measure, in this case they are talking of mass, which is just the beam uh, balance. So it is called the beam balance. Then, of course, the question two is that the mass of the, state the mass of the lion on the, uh, on earth. So, please, to make sense, sometimes you might be in a hurry. So, to make sense of these questions, you should every time start from that. So, state, uh -huh, this one, then state, uh -huh, that one. So, state the mass of uh, the 200 uh, kg lion on the moon. Now, one thing you should know that mass is the same everywhere. It doesn't change. Especially if you want to compare in two places, that is that is the uh, moon and the earth. So the mass will still remain 200 kg. Sometimes you'll be asked to give a reason because mass is constant. Then calculate the weight of the lion on earth. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. What is the mass? The mass is uh, 200 kg multiplied by what is acceleration is given 10 meter per second square. And this is going to give us a 2000 Newton. That is the weight. So we are done with these uh, questions. All right. So we've come to the end of this part. I guess you've enjoyed and I hope um, uh, everything you've understood everything. So please at this point, if you've not subscribed to this YouTube channel, consider doing so. Share with your family members and also your friends. 
If you have someone who is writing the exams, please recommend them to this platform because uh, this platform we are about to make it more interesting. So please, if you are interested also in the online lessons, don't forget to get in touch on the number 0976 402563. Okay, for registration. Otherwise, the class has started. Okay, so see you in the next one.